Hello guys, this is Abdi Karim from CodesideAcademy.com. Uh, today we will continue where we stop on our Flask course, web development with Python. So we stop at a protected and unprotected page, fetching information from current logged in users. So today we will continue building a, a user management system that will be managing uh, our users, our sign up users, whereby we can we can view them view the view sign up users on our on our in our back end our admin so today we'll create an admin an admin page where we can see all our sign up user as the users is signing up you'll be able to see them in your own back end and then we can be able to determine how many users you have on your platform and uh, how we can do a lot with them so today we'll be doing that in two form We'll be building it from scratch by ourselves at the same time we'll be using a flask extension called flask admin so let's get started so i've already got i've uh, prepared some information some basic html that we'll, we'll be making use of uh, so i'll be i'll be i've already get this html that i'll be making use of this table.html so we'll populate this table with the information coming from our database so that is what we are going to do okay so first we need to create a route or well, this is the html table that i just showed you this is the syntax this is the html content so we'll populate this information with what we have in our database the users that has already signed up so first we need to make sure this table is related to the, what we have in our table in our database model so we need to look come back here we have name email address id so first we need to create a space for id so we have id in our column in our database so we are representing the data that we have in our database in our html so i'll call this id and name full name I'm oh, sorry yeah we need an address we need to make sure it's exact thing that we have here we have name email address so you can give it any name you want here yeah, but just to make not to get you yourself confused so you make sure it match everything here so we have address okay so uh, normally you don't have to display your password to the your password is something that is not meant to know okay so we'll continue so we have half we have all this so let's render this template we need to create a route this route we'll call it table okay so this table is what we will use to render the html table.html that we have uh, return render template Okay, render template table dot html. Fine, so let's power our server. Let's turn it on. Okay, says so we have something running. What do I have running on that port? Okay, I'm sorry about that. I have something running on that port. I just have to Reload. So let's turn it on again. Fine. So let me get on the tab. Okay. Fine. So I will visit localhost at eighty thousand slash table. 
fine so this is the table this is what we just render so we need to remove all this information and hide the proper information here so i will remove uh, all this. this is what we need because when we are populating this information from the database we will have to loop so and this loop will create multiple version of this html so we don't have to stress ourselves on doing this manually i mean writing the content manually one after the other by ourselves <clears throat> so to be able to do this so we need to use flux sql alchemy which I've already import here and we'll be making use of this class since this class is the name of our table and this is the table we want to get information from so first I'll come to the table okay I'll create a variable called users so I'll say users the, the, the DB, database model name this this database model name so I'll call the class name dot query dot hall so once i use this i query everything in that table so now we'll use this with our jinja2 template engine so i'll say users this variable that i have here i'll pass it inside this template so that i'll be able to display it inside the h table dot html so users equals to users so I'll come inside the table here. So I will use for loop to to specify that you are using Jinja to template engine in Flask. You need to use two double curly bracket. If you are writing syntax, you use two double curly bracket and the percentage, the modulus symbol. But if you are passing just an ordinary variable then you'll be using just the two curly brackets double two curly bracket so we'll say for user and users if you're python i assume everybody that is learning watching this video tutorial has a background in python already so if you have a background in python already you will understand what i'm doing this for loop is the same as the one we do in our python using for loop statement so instead of us using the for loop statement in our python we are using this in our template in our html and what is giving us this ability to be able to do this is the um is the jinja2 template engine if you remember in our flask overview the introduction to this course i talked about flask template engine so and this is what the flask template engine will be doing so it's used to communicate from the back end to the front end so with this we can talk to our back end from our front end we can talk to our front end from our back end through jinja2 so it's like we are putting python inside html so for users in user so we'll say user this is not a new variable and this is the one we pass in from here users if you look at it here we pass this this is here then we give, assign a new variable for it here then we'll be using this user dot so to be able to populate the information we want to get the name so user dot name okay user dot sorry this one should be remember the first table head is id so the user dot id and the next one will be user dot name and here we we'll have user dot email okay so here again we we'll have user dot address okay so I need to close this tag here and close it 
we need to hand our for loop the code curly bracket and the percentage Let's say end for okay so if we come back to our code here if we reload this page we'll have the information that we have lastly the last time we are doing this class now we can now see the amount of users signing up on our platform so let me go and create a new account so i'll come here i will enter down again uh, download at gmail.com password is one 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 my address will be nig nigeria you say nigeria Castina. okay that's my address fine so if we go to table now we will have that information populated so now from here we can now see amount of users signing up on our platform i mean we can now okay i have three users on my platform i have 10 users i have 100 users on my platform so these are to fetch information from your database using flash sql alchemy so what if we want to do some other uh, other project, I mean other features, like uh, we want to be able to do crude, what do we mean by crude? Crude means create, read, update, delete, whereby we'll be able to edit this information, delete this information, and uh, modify it, do whatever we want to it, and create new one from here. So to do that, we can build that from scratch we can build out from scratch which we will later see in the future when we are building the end project the final project of this course how we can do that but to be able to do this we have alternative you don't have to rack your brain to develop all this kind of admin stuff in python we have something called flask admin flask admin is an extension for, for python for flask for you the developer to be able to integrate admin control to your to your web apps without thinking of the logic too much though, though there's a bit logic behind it but you don't really have to do much logic you just have to call the functions and uh, the library the extension your code and get things done so that is what we mean by uh, that is what flask admin will be doing so first since we have seen what we are doing here we need to protect this page so that people will not be accessing our users information anyhow so to protect it all we have to do here just have to pass at login required okay so now if i go to that page and i try to so i can't access the page anymore the page is now protected the user have to log in before accessing the table route okay fine so let's quickly talk about this Flask admin. So we have this. We walk in. To be able to use Flask admin, we need to install Flask admin on our machine by using pip. You know, Windows, you just type pip install Flask admin. Okay. So we'll wait for the installation. So we are waiting for the installation. I have to skip this. Oh, I'm having network issues. So let me do it again. So I have to um, forward uh, skip some part because of the installation was kind of very slow. So now the installation is complete. So we'll continue. So 
once you are done with the installation you have to import flask admin okay, from flask admin import admin so once you have import this you need to um you need to uh get some yeah uh, initialize some stuff so flask admin has things a lot of things like that, that you might have interest in so once you have import flask admin you can create an object name let's call this object name admin so admin we take in half it's in parameters admin will take in name let's, uh, let's call this the name this will be the name that our admin panel will be let's call this control panel where we want to control our users information okay so once we have this guy let me try and rerun let me run this code for you now we should have a new URL that will be generated for us by Flask Admin. Okay. Um, okay. So if we visit here. Now you can see we have all this uh, this place saying control panel home. There is nothing here. So now this is the interface that we'll be having for our admin. So we need to relate our database model, our our column with this interface, so that we'll be able to do crude. What I call crude. Crude means create, read, update, delete, so that we'll be able to read our users information edit it delete it create new one so this flask admin if you are a django guy we also have django admin so you can also use uh we have most uh, frameworks in python has their own admin uh, batteries included so it doesn't matter the one you you choose depends on your frameworks okay so we have set up our admin now the next thing for us is to relate this admin with our database model so we need to import some couple of things from flask admin once again so we import from flask admin contrib sqle so from flask on the bar admin dot contrib contrib dot sql okay so we'll import model view model view will be the one to 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 handle to handle the representation to display our model view the the data is inside our model inside this user in our database it will be the one to display it for us okay so we will just uh here so since you remember we have created an object name called admin here so we need to make use of that object name now okay so we say admin the object name dot had from the bar view okay we'll call the class that we import from country based sql a call model view okay so we type model view, alright. So inside model view, now we can now pass the name of the table we want to give a view to. So we want to give view to users. We want to display the information that is inside users column, the users table. So I'll type users. Okay. So I will put 
come out here it takes another parameter called db session okay so by now if i should go back to my admin interface and i reload i should have users and if i click users i should have this information now i can now edit the record and change it to I can change it to anything I want. I can change it to okay. So if I change it, change it to this. Now remember, we have a table URL that we created in the past. I need to log in to be able to access this table. So password is one. Uh, table. Now you can see the information has reflect that I've tampered with it. I've changed it in my admin. So let me do it again. Localhost is a thousand slash admin. Okay. So let's change this to now. You can see here if I reload. We have this thing. I cannot edit it here. You take it back to what it is. Then I'll save. Now I can read and I can edit. Now you can see the information is changed. So now I can delete the account. Let me delete this account and let me reload. Now you can see we have deleted this and uh, we can create a new account by ourselves from here. Okay. Address of whatever you want it to be. We save. We reload here. We have the information. Okay, this is about Flask admin, but not all about Flask admin. So in the next class, we'll be stepping further, combining the former skills we have been learning in the past, making this a kind of well-structured project, and see how far we can go. And uh, please, if you have not, uh subscribe to our youtube channel you can visit our youtube type codeside academy on our on your search bar subscribe to our channel you will still get some other tutorials other courses other videos that apart from the one you are getting here from our youtube channel and like our facebook page visit facebook.com slash codeside academy follow us on twitter at codeside a so those are the medium if you have, have any question you want to ask you can hit the contact us button on your right side or you want to co comment down below just comment down below we'll be there giving you response so see you guys in next class and have a wonderful day